Good evening, everyone. Welcome to East Georgia State College's annual patriotic concert, a celebration of our community and our country. Could we begin tonight first with a round of applause for veterans, police, and first responders that may be with us this evening? The East Georgia State College Foundation has provided the funding that makes this food, music, and fellowship possible this evening. Thank you to Chairman Denny Key and all of the trustees of the foundation for all you do to make this college a great college. Thank you so much, Denny. This college is truly fortunate, as you've already seen this evening, to have a dedicated and talented staff which keeps our campus beautiful, keeps it safe, and provides us with great sound and lighting for events like this, and really important this evening, great food. I'd like to say thanks to Angie Russell who coordinated the efforts of all of our staff this evening in making this possible. And thanks to the folks from external affairs, public safety, food services, plant operations, IT, and student affairs. Let's give them a round of applause as well. And I really want to say a special thanks to the Swainsboro Emanuel County community for coming out tonight to celebrate with us. I can't say this often enough, but this is your college. This community built this college, and this community is the reason for this college. And it just means so much to all of us when you come out and spend an evening with us enjoying this very special place. So thanks to all of you for being here tonight. Now, all of us are about to enjoy a very special treat provided by a superb orchestra, which is a great friend of the college. The Columbia County Orchestra has performed here six times since 2009, and we know, Rob, that this is just another performance in a series of many great performances that are going to continue over years to come in the future. So thank you for being here so many times in the past and for being here tonight. This fine orchestra features many of our very own Swainsboro Emanuel County residents, and I just want to mention tonight that Bill Sasser, Jonathan Scott, and Robert Agress are with us tonight as part of this orchestra. It's conducted by a man who in Swainsboro we love to call our own. Uh, Maestro Rob Norden, as you know, teaches for the college in Augusta, and he was formerly the music minister at First Baptist Church here in Swainsboro. And he's now the executive and music director of Columbia County Orchestra. He founded this orchestra in 2008, and it's son since become a point of pride throughout Augusta and the surrounding communities. Please join me in giving an East Georgia State College welcome to the Columbia County Orchestra, Maestro Rob Norden and his daughter, Rebecca. Welcome. If you would please stand as we uh, salute and pay attention to our national anthem.
seated. The group that you see up here tonight is the Columbia County Orchestra Brass. Uh, we do have a few folks that are helping us with this program. Uh, we've got three members of the United States Army Signal Corps Band. Gentlemen, would you please stand? And we appreciate them playing with us. And then we also have members of the Augusta Concert Band playing with us. Y'all, please stand. Now, most people, they know that first song that we just played, and they've heard it many times. But tonight, you're going to experience something of a musical timeline. And the first piece that you just heard played, the poem of that was originally entitled Defense of Fort McHenry by Francis Scott Key. It was during the War of 1812. It was in 1814 that he observed what was going on as the British were firing on Fort McHenry. And of course, as it says toward the end of the poem, that when the smoke cleared and when the dawn came, the flag was still there. And we are here today because of patriots at that time and many since that time who have paid the price of freedom uh, for all of us in sacrifice of life and homes and many other things. Uh, this next piece we're going to play for you is entitled uh, Joyce's 71st New York Regiment March. It was composed in the 1800s by John Philip Sousa. It's actually one of my favorite marches, but not very many people get to hear it. Uh, and hopefully, we will make it sound easy when we play it tonight. Because if it sounds hard, then we've missed it. Uh, Sousa wrote this for Thomas Joyce, who was the director of the 71st New York Regiment Band. So that's the reason why it goes by that title, Joyce's 71st New York Regiment March.
they wanted to get that one over with early so that they didn't have to worry about the rest of the program. So. <laughs> Our next uh, arrangement we're going to play is actually an arrangement of a tune that some people identify as America. You perhaps would know it as My Country Tis of Thee. Uh, the lyrics were written by Samuel Francis Smith to the tune of God Save the Queen in 1831. At the time, uh, the composer was looking, or the, the writer of the text was looking for a tune to inspire the poem. And so Mr. Smith went to Muzio Clementi's Symphony No. 3. Those of you that had piano lessons years ago, you got to play some Bach and Clementi and Mozart and Beethoven. And he was inspired by the uh, melody that he heard within Symphony No. 3. Lowell Mason was a fellow student in college at the time and an American composer and kind of helped Smith as the words to my country tis of thee were penned. Now the arrangement you're going to hear that we're going to do of this tonight is more like a ballad sound. It's not as traditional sounding, but it's a nice contrast to many of the other things we're doing in the program tonight. America, my country tis of thee.
What you just heard was known as the Navy Hymn, also the hymn tune, Eternal Father, Strong to Save, written in 1860 by William Whiting, who was a faculty member at Wellesley College, inspired by the dangers of sea found in Psalm 107. It was later popularized by the Royal Navy and also the United States Navy. Our next selection is entitled, When Johnny Comes Marching Home. The text was written in 1863 by band leader Patrick Gilmore. The tune is borrowed from a previous title called Johnny Fill Up the Bowl. You just use your imagination. It was an immensely popular song uh, that was sung by both northern and southern troops during the war between the states. When Johnny comes marching home. This next tune that we will play for you was originally written in 1869. It was a popular American song. No, let me say that again. It was a very popular American song. So much so that it was made popular again during Prohibition. The name of the tune is Little Brown Jug.
dedicate that to one of our players up here, but I'm not going to say his name. This next tune we're going to play for you was originally written for band. It was written in 1888 by John Philip Sousa. It is known as the official march of the Marine Corps, Semper Fidelis, of course, meaning always faithful. The Sousa Band Director of the United States Marine Corps Band uh, was John Philip Sousa for five presidential administrations. And this tune actually came at the request of President Chester Arthur, and the name of the tune is Semper Fidelis. Our next selection is another Sousa March entitled The Thunderer. It was written in 1889. Now, for those of you who had music appreciation like forever ago in college, okay, the form of this is introduction, A, A, B, B, C, D, C, D, C. Okay, got that? All right. That structure was used in many other Sousa marches. Interestingly enough, though, with this particular march, there is not much that is known about the origin of it, how it came to be written, what it was written for, or anything. So we just call it the Thunderer. We don't, <laughs> we don't know why he wrote it. But he began to standardize his forms at that time. And for somebody that teaches music appreciation, I know a little bit about the form stuff. So the Thunderer, and maybe we'll get some extra in there, and that'll be fun. Thank you. 
America the Beautiful was a poem that was written in 1893, inspired by sights that were seen traveling by train to Colorado Springs, Colorado. The writer of this was an English professor that was teaching a short summer school session at Colorado College. So as you listen to this and think of the different scenes that you remember from the words of America the Beautiful, this basically came from a teacher who was teaching summer school halfway across the country. And while riding there, saw the beautiful uh, landscape of our country, America the Beautiful. So now we are into the 20th century. There was a patriotic song that was in a Broadway musical in 1904. The name of the musical was Little Johnny Jones. The Broadway musical was entitled Yankee Doodle 
You know, the tune was entitled Yankee Doodle Boy, and the musical was written by George M. Cohan. Um, as the 20th century progressed further, eventually Broadway was known as Broadway that the Cohans built. And of course now you know, we look back and we say, well, who was that? But there was a time in the early 1900s, the 1910s, the 1920s, the 1930s, you could not walk up and down Broadway without seeing a Cohan musical because they dominated everything. So this is entitled Yankee Doodle Boy. tell they have fun up here. Sometimes they have so much fun, I have to be the serious one. And that's always bad. Well, George M. Cohan continued to write in the 20th century. There was another Broadway musical that was entitled George Washington, Jr. Now, how many of you were there at the premiere of that? You would be, you would be a scientific feat if that was the case. It was written in 1906 by Cohan, and it includes snippets of various other songs. Now, the interesting thing about this tune, he originally was going to entitle this, You're a, Gla a Grand Old Rag, but there was a reason for it. Before the musical was premiered, he got involved in a conversation with a veteran from Gettysburg. And this veteran had a small part of an American flag that was on the battlefield at Gettysburg. And he pulled out this napkin and then he pulled out this little piece of Cloth. And he said, what is that? And the veteran told him that these are the remnants of the flag from our battalion. And I have held it all of these years. You're a grand old Thank you. 
Sometimes you just smile and nod. Just one of those times, okay? <clears throat> in 1917, the world was at war again. And George M. Cohan was called on to write a recruitment song for the United States military. The name of the song was Over There. It was a popular tune all through World War I, but it also became popular again during World War II when the United States found itself at war in December of 1941. But a few years before that, Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1936 knew how important patriotism, and also music was. And FDR presented to Cohan the Congressional Gold Medal for not only what he wrote in World War I, but the songs that he continued to write as the, the American government was faced with eventually entering war once again, over there. Thank you very much for coming this evening. Dr. Bomer, thank you for the invitation. Elizabeth Gilmer, thank you for the logistics. Dr. Jeff Edgens, thank you so much for coming from East Georgia State College, Augusta. Uh, he's my immediate supervisor at East Georgia, and I'm so tickled to be able to teach with East Georgia again. I taught with East Georgia when I lived in Swainsboro back in the early 90s. And as I was looking to eventually move to Augusta, uh, Dr. Jean Bridges came to me and she said, I know we don't pay very much, but is there any way that you would consider commuting from Augusta to Swainsboro to teach? I'm sure that I can get you some more sections of the course. And I said, oh, I just think it's going to be too far to go. So 
I moved on, went on to Augusta. About five years ago, I think it was the second time we came to do this program, maybe the, maybe the third, uh, before Dr. Gomer was here, Dr. Black came to me. He said, is there any way that you would ever consider teaching for East Georgia again? I said, well, I had a great time. I said, the only way that I think I could realistically do that is if somehow East Georgia were to offer any courses in Augusta. And he said, well, I, I really don't see that happening. And little did he know, <laughs> a few years later, with Georgia Regents University realigning and changing things with their college division, that eventually East Georgia, with the leadership here at the college, was able to step into that. And with the blessings of the Regents and with the uh, directions of the legislature with funding and everything else, that was able to take place. And this time last year, I had not had my interview yet with Dr. Goodman or Dr. Edgens, but they can both tell you that I was very, I was very excited about the possibility of teaching with East Georgia again. So here I am, back on faculty again, and then this next year with all the growth already projected for East Georgia in Augusta, we've got 100% plus growth from last year, which is fantastic. I thank Dr. Bomer for his leadership in that, but I also thank Dr. Jeff Edgens. Uh, he's not paying me any extra to say this, but he is a great guy to work with. I, I have a ball with him always have fun and he does a great job there and uh, y'all have a great leader in him in Augusta and I thank you for seeing that through. Our last selection tonight is a selection that's not chronological but it would be anticlimactic to do it any other place than at the end of the program. This Susan March was written in 1897. It was actually written on Christmas Day in Sousa's head while he and his wife were returning from vacation abroad. They were given the, the word that the Sousa Band manager, David Blakely, had just passed away. So he thought, Blakely's worked with us all of these years. I want to do something to remember him. So this march that he composed in his head, he eventually committed to paper on arrival in the US. It was proclaimed in 1987 as the official national march of the United States. And the title of this march is stars and stripes forever. If you don't have a flag, pretend like you do and just have fun on this. Thank you for coming this evening. 